So what I've put together are a number of necks in different stages to sort of illustrate the steps of what I go through. So this one is not glued together, but we'll pretend it's glued together. And that's what I end up with is this taper, and it's all one piece. But the next thing is come along with some wings and glue these to the side so that I have a shape that will accommodate the headstock. So I put these at an angle because the headstock goes down at an angle. I have a template. This happens to be a five string, so here's my template. And I'm, I, I know the outer shape, and I, and I make sure that the wings are going to accommodate that. And then eventually I know where I'm going to drill the holes for the tuning pegs. Also, I will take the body wood and uh, have a thin, about eighth of an inch thick um, cap made with matching wood to the body top. And uh, my friend Heron, who uh, is a laser cutter, she uh, cuts in the wind logo, and she'll cut uh, out of another contrasting piece of wood like Wenge. This is Wenge that goes all the way through. It's like a little puzzle piece that I inlay right into here. So I'm going to eventually, after this is laminated, I'll cut the silhouette, and I'm to this next phase. I've now, at this point, glued on, uh, this happens to be walnut, a cap on there. I've got my basic shape cut out. And I've cut the back enough so that just my clamps can clamp on here in a straight way. I've also routed for the truss rod. The truss rod um, fits right in there. And uh, eventually, you can put an Allen wrench uh, and move it in one direction. It will make it uh, convex. In another one, it will make it concave. So you have total control when you have the string tension on this neck uh, to, to be able to adjust the, the flatness uh, of the neck. So the next step, I've got it still, it's just a square block. I'm going to glue the fretboard on, onto the um, neck so that my clamps uh, uh, fit squarely. So here's my fretboard. That's all glued on now. And the next step is to go to the bandsaw, and I will cut off the basic silhouette. I don't want to sit there and hand carve all of that off. I want to lose as much material as I can. So this is the basic thickness of, of the neck has been cut away. And then I go to a step where I pretty much freehand the, the overall rough, rough uh, outline of the neck. I'm going to round it, and I do this with the bandsaw as well, simply because it's the quickest way to take material off. And obviously, you can't put wood back on. So this is a stage where I'm careful to go no farther than I know uh, I'm going to want to go later. So now, what you can see is that it's rough. It's planes. It's not it's not a perfect curve. The, the magic is that I go to files at this point, rasps. These particular rasps were made in Japan, and they're handmade, and the, all the rows are random. They're not machine channels. They're the most wonderful rasps to use. And I am going to shape with these rasps. And what a, what a file basically does as you're using it is that it takes off the high and the low points. It averages everything out. So I go through lots of rounding, lots of feeling. It's a touch thing. And I eventually get to, with a lot of rasp work and then finer, finer, finer sanding, I get to where I've got my contour rounded. And it's, it feels exactly like it should. And I talk with each bass player as I'm making his bass. And I'll ask them, do you like crazy thin, thin, medium thin, medium, medium heavy, or you know, chunky? And I'll get answers and contours. There are a number of different contours that I use. But it's all hand-shaped, and I can therefore vary whatever I'm doing to uh, the exact needs of, of the player. So that, those are the basic steps in getting the neck shaped. And you, you notice, too, that I've done all this work before the body has been glued on to the, to the neck because it's so easy to get to everything without the, the body being in the way. So 
that, this, is, this is as far as I take the neck before I've glued the body wings on. Okay?